scene one and action. Today on our episode, we're going to talk about my PhD research. Somebody requested that I make this video a couple of days ago. So if you guys have any questions or would like me to make a new video about any kind of topic, feel free to comment in the section down below and I'm happy to address it. So my PhD research is called, brace yourself, quantum artificial intelligence. I know that sounds super buzzwordy and there actually exists a good reason for this. So a couple of years ago, I was in San Diego having drinks with my friends in the evening and we were talking about what the coolest buzzwords are in all the different scientific fields. So for physics, we agreed that anything that has the word quantum in it sounds amazing. And for computer science, anything that has a term artificial intelligence just sounds mind blowing. So somebody, maybe it was me, I can't even remember anymore, said, let's put this together and create a field that's called quantum artificial intelligence. We all got super hyped up thinking that we would become the founding fathers of this new field. But unfortunately, the next morning, I looked it up on the internet and it turns out there was some guy called Seth Lloyd from MIT who had already invented the field a couple of years before me. Knowing that I wasn't the first person in the field, at least I wanted to work with one of the inventors themselves. So after I applied to MIT and got admitted, I directly reached out to him and that's how I ended up here. You might be asking yourself, what the heck is quantum artificial intelligence? Well, it's a subfield of quantum computing. So let me first start by explaining what quantum computing is. And don't worry, I'm not going to go into any very deep technical details. So this is a quantum computer. It's essentially a fridge inside a fridge inside a fridge with a very, very cold chip at the very, very core of it. This small thing in the middle is where all the magic happens. And when I say magic, I'm not exaggerating. If you manage to build large enough quantum computers that are efficient, this is going to be one of the greatest accomplishments mankind has ever seen. So, who came up with this idea? One of the very first people who envisioned the concept of a quantum computer was the master himself, Richard Feynman. And fun fact, he used to walk these very corridors as a student at MIT. And he's kind of my academic crush. <laughs> But even though Feynman had the right intuition, it wasn't until another genius came along and came up with the first algorithm that was actually impactful. Maybe you've heard about Shor's famous quantum factoring algorithm. So what does Shor's algorithm do? Here's an elevator pitch in an elevator with Peter Shor. Hello, Peter. How are you doing? Good. And how about you, Samuel? I'm doing great. Good. I meant to ask a little question. Do you mind explaining uh, people on the internet uh, what your algorithm does? No, I'd be happy to. So what my algorithm does is it factors large numbers, that uh, means you know, break them up into a product of primes, mm -hmm. and the way it does that is it uses periodicity. You can use the period of a sequence to find the factors of a number, and what the quantum algorithm does is it uses interference to find the period of a sequence. Okay, so it means if I had a perfect quantum computer right now, I would be able to break almost any RSA security on the internet. Yeah. I would be able to steal people's data. I would be able to listen in all kind of communication, right? Right. And that must be the reason why governments are so interested about uh, getting there first. Yeah, but definitely. The, I mean, the reason the governments aren't so interested is not reading your email, but reading, <laughs> <laughs> say, the Chinese um, secret communications. <laughs> and the Chinese want to read the American communications. Exactly. All right, do you think it's going to happen very soon? Um, I, well, I think we'll have small computer, quantum computers that will do interesting things very soon, but we're going to have to wait at least a decade or two for RSA. Sure. Only at MIT. If you would like to see a more detailed discussion with my boy Peter, hit the like button and let me know what questions we have for him in the comment section down below. This may sound really scary, but most applications of quantum computers are actually really positive. One of the most promising early applications of quantum computers is quantum simulation. Instead of going through the extremely slow, frustrating and tedious process of trial and error for developing new drugs, we could use quantum computers that could simulate all possible drugs at the same time and pick out the right cure to a given disease. Another application of quantum computers is quantum cybersecurity. Quantum computers cannot just break classical RSA encryption using Shor's algorithm, they also provide a cure to the disease. And by cure, I mean completely secure communication using quantum encrypted data. It is so secure that it is theoretically and practically impossible to break it even with a quantum computer. The only way to break quantum encryption would be by breaking the known laws of physics or by taking a peek at someone's computer screen. And finally, there is quantum machine learning or quantum artificial intelligence, if you prefer that name. This is my field of research. There exist different approaches to quantum machine learning. 
If you want, let me know and I can make a more detailed video in the future. At the moment, it is very unclear how well quantum machine learning is going to perform in the future, as Peter is going to explain. Quantum machine learning, it's really very difficult to predict at this point because if you look at machine learning on digital computers, nobody knows why it works. <laughs> and the only reason they know that it works really well is they've done experiments on digital computers and it works. But with quantum machine learning, we don't have any quantum computers big enough to do experiments on. And since we don't know why classical machine learning works, we can't use theory to predict how quantum machine learning is going to do better. So weirdly, it's, you know, we have no idea whether quantum machine learning is going to work better or not. I think it's very likely that it will work better, but... Let's hope so, because that's my field of research. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I made a big risk choosing the topic. <laughs> it's a very good topic to write papers on until somebody actually programs them up on a real quantum computer and yeah. finds that these, all these nice algorithms fail. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. All right. Now you know what all this fuss is about. Let me briefly explain how a quantum computer actually works. In order to understand this, we will have to dive into another dimension. A dimension that is so small that our mind completely fails to comprehend it. This is the subatomic world of quantum mechanics. Even Albert Einstein initially refused to believe it because it is so counterintuitive and hard to understand. A classical computer operates with bits, which can be either zeros or ones and performs calculations with gates, such as AND, OR, and NOT gates. Every program on a classical computer, as simple as a calculator or as advanced as a neural network, can be broken down into these very simple gates. A quantum computer, on the other hand, operates very differently. Instead of using classical bits, that can only be zeros and ones, it uses quantum bits, or qubits, that can be any linear superposition between zero and one. And only, once we measure it, it actually collapses into a classical state of 0 and 1 with a certain probability. This behavior is random, and there is no way to predict what is going to happen with certainty. A quantum program, just as a classical program, consists of a collection of logical gates, quantum logical gates in this case. But instead of just having simple logical gates such as AND and OR operations at our disposal, quantum logical gates can be much more powerful and much more advanced. They can be represented as complex matrices, here is a sketch of a quantum program. On the left, we have the input states. These can be either zeros and ones. Then we start applying gates from the left to the right, and we thereby create something that's called an entangled state. This entangled state consists of zeros and ones and any kind of mix in between. And then on the very right, at the end of the program, we get the result. So this result might contain the solution to all of our universe's problems, but unfortunately, if you measure it, it's going to collapse. We will only get one classical result of zeros and ones. And it is extremely unlikely that this result is actually going to be the one that we were looking for. The real difficulty in developing a quantum algorithm is finding the right combination of gates, which are going to maximize the probability that we're going to measure the right result, which is a solution to a given problem, as opposed to one of the exponentially many garbage results. If you're confused with everything that I just said, that's fine, so am I. Most of the time when I talk to my colleagues, I actually have no idea what they're talking about when they're explaining their algorithms. The field is just so complicated. All right, now that we're all collectively confused, let's move on to the actual topic of this video, my PhD research. I have been working on a very interesting project funded by the US Defense Department. The idea is the following. I train a classical neural network, and this neural network learns the circuit of a quantum program. This quantum program is then used to do some machine learning task. It's basically a hybrid quantum classical algorithm. The way my neural network programs the quantum computer is by learning a specific set of parameters. These parameters are then used to control individual gates on individual qubits and evolve the overall state of the quantum computer in the right direction. At the moment, I'm already able to use my algorithm for some simple machine learning task, such as, for example, distinguishing between pictures of cats and dogs. Obviously, this ain't rocket science. Google's image search can already do this. But the long-term goal is upgrading this and being able to do this on real quantum data. As large enough quantum computers don't yet exist, I have to test my algorithms by simulating them in a small version of one of MIT's supercomputers. Welcome to MIT's supercomputer room, or as I like to call it, Samuel's Bitcoin farm. Just kidding, I will get fired if I actually misuse this for cryptocurrencies. 
but I do use it for my quantum computer simulations. At the moment, I can only simulate up to 13 quantum bits because the complexity of the simulation increases exponentially with the number of qubits. But in a few weeks, I hope to get up to over 20 quantum bits. All right, this was my PhD research in a nutshell. Obviously, I'm super early in my PhD, so I still have a lot to learn. And also, the whole field is very new, so let's see where it goes. If you like this video and learned something new, please give it a thumbs up so YouTube's non-quantum algorithm picks it up and shows it to as many people as possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye! Action. Action. Don't know my lines. Just kidding. Know everything. All right, let's get started. But even though Feynman had <laughs> as large enough, I'll no. <laughs> In more detail. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, go. Okay, you gotta be serious now. My lips are dry. How was this one full sentence? The most beautiful thing I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> the algorithm that was actually packed for. Impactful. Impactful. No. Terrible. Can I turn the lights on? Uh. That's so weird. Huh? Oh. Did you just see that? Mm -hmm. They just turned off and off. That's magic. Awesome. Quantum computer. Quantum. <laughs> quantum so quantum is basically a fridge inside a fridge inside another fridge. And that's like all you need to know, you know? So smart. Thank you. That's how I got into MIT. I'm simulating all of my simulations. Now that sounds terrible. I'm simulating all my simulations. <laughs> I'm simulating all my simulations. <laughs>